Welcome to People Like You. Jubilee Christian Center has served the San Francisco Bay Area for over 35 years. Its influence in South Korea and other parts of the world continues today. Founding Pastor Dick Burnell joins us to talk about the Bay Area and what God is doing here in our own backyard. So don't go away. I think churches are ready to be filled with people, but we've got to make them feel welcome. We've got to fast, we've got to pray. Yeah. We've we got to preach faith, love, and joy and, and be optimistic uh, about, about, because heaven is so wonderful. Welcome back. Jubilee Christian Center stands as a lighthouse to the Bay Area. It is a testament to the incredible power of God and one man's sold out commitment to being a living example of His grace. Founding Pastor Dick Burnell joins us today to talk about the legacy of Jubilee and more importantly, what God is up to right now in the Bay Area. This is an honor, you know, to well, be thank here with you. you. Thank you. 35 years. 35 years. Of, and, and, when you say it, it doesn't seem like that long ago. <laughs> I, I start going back decades, over Decades, Dick, decades. Yeah, three and a half <laughs> decades. Well, Ronald Reagan uh, was elected uh, two weeks before we started the church. Uh, Apple was in its fledgling, still yes. trying to figure it out. No dot com, no, no, no cell phones. No. Nope. My, uh, my grandkids go, Grandpa, what, what was it like before cell phones? <laughs> <laughs> or a, a, pastor, a pastor friend of mine, his daughter said, Dad, is it true that before Wings, Paul McCartney was in another band? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh. When you, when you talk 35 years and you try, to, you try to talk to, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 year old grandkids, they can't. I said, Bad I was him. around before television. They just staring at you. <laughs> like, did you live in a cave? Black and white. <laughs> television and before any television and but that's a that's a blessing of living long enough to see how the world is transforming and and to still be part of it still be here yeah and we started as we shared on a, a, a last episode. program but we, we started with you know what Deb when I got saved saved I got saved and got called Carl and I called to the ministry yeah. I had one little simple request and I don't recommend making deals with God, you know, but I had this, like, I'll do, I'll do what you want. But. If, but, but I said, I want my family to make heaven. And so I wasn't, I wow. wasn't thinking. You weren't even thinking of, about I yourself. I wasn't thinking of building a mega Dick. church or no. having a ministry, you know, that I'm honored and humbled to travel the world. But I was thinking my sisters, my brother-in-law, my nieces, my nephews. Wow. And, and maybe a few of their friends, and I would be happy, I would die happy if we could lead, Carl and I could lead them to the Lord. Well, we did, but what happened was we started a little Bible study. Yes. And all of a sudden people started coming, and now we're cramming 30, 40 people into a house. And my sister said, looks like we have a church. And it's like, well, what do we do next? <laughs> like, how do you start a church? Well, you need a 501c3. What's that? A what? God. I said, a 501 what? <laughs> well, you got it, you know, and I, yes. I, said, I said, all I know is I think I need a pulpit and a microphone. That's all I need. Yeah. In fact, our first church service, I didn't take an offering. That's how green I was. <laughs> and my sister stood up, she started waving her checkbook, and I thought, what? I go, what? She was taking, she yells at me, take an offering. We had no buckets. <laughs> Which sister? <laughs> Juanita. The, well, the, biz, the, business, Juanita. the business one, the business side <laughs> one. My brother-in-law took his cowboy hat off and we literally passed the hat to the small, our first official church service was November the 16th, 1980. And we had 18 people there and 14 of them were family and friends. And I don't know who the other four people were, but we had people come forward to give their heart to Christ yeah. and for prayer. And uh, Pastor, yeah. thousands of people attend Jubilee now, thousands and electronically. Thousands. Yeah. We've had over, uh, we've had over a hundred, I think, hundred forty thousand people at members at one time, which makes me proud because that's that's like a tithe of Santa Clara County, or yeah. close. So, I mean, people actually signed up. I don't know where they, I don't know where they all are now. <laughs> you know, most of them probably in heaven because they, a lot of them grew up. A lot of them were older than me. I started. I was thirty six when I started yeah. the church, 
And of course, a lot of them have retired and moved yeah. and passed away and all that. But but it's been a good run. And People have asked me, when, when are Jubilee services? And I say, well, the Sunday morning service starts on Friday night. I mean, that well, that happened too. And now you've got Hispanic Church on yeah. Friday. I mean, there there's a lot yeah, going have, on at Jubilee. something going on. All the time. All the time. Even some Monday, even every now and then, I'll find out something going on on Monday because the building's empty. Yeah. And we let a lot of other ministries, yeah. Koreans, Taiwanese. We just had the assemblies of the Samoan, California Assemblies yes. of God. Uh, at our facility, concerts. Mm -hmm. So we let other ministries yeah. use. It's a lighthouse. Uh, you know, use the facility when, when we're not using it. But You uh, had salvations. We're going to break, but I, um, I, just because we talked about 35 years, started yeah. with four people, then 11. But how many people accepted Christ in a recent service there? Uh, one Sunday we had close to 500 people one, sir. Uh, one raise Sunday. their hand. Wow. And I want to talk about that when we get a chance because okay. 300 of them got baptized in their clothes. Oh, that is a good story that for the day. day. So lots going on in the Bay Area. We're gonna hear more about that. And we're gonna talk about um, transforming the Bay with please, Christ. And please, some other. Okay, so. So excited about that. Stay with us. Here's Paul and 12 Baptist who got filled with the Spirit. And wow, look what happened to Ephesus. I think that's what's gonna happen, not just in San Francisco, but I'm talking about the whole Bay. So Jubilee Christian Center, uh, you just like people accept Christ and then they get baptized immediately. Well, this what is the story? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this doesn't happen every Sunday. We, we we usually give an altar call every service to accept Christ, follow Christ, serve Christ, uh, and then you know, or they need prayer, yes. you know, whatever. But so I would, cool. Carl and I, and my uh, my my daughter, my son-in-law, I was doing a wedding in San Antonio, Texas, and I, I've invited a. Uh, a friend of mine, Bishop Michael Pitts, who's a great preacher, to come out once a month and hold revival services. So while I was in Texas, he said, I, I feel something special is going to happen this Sunday. Wow. Well, he set it up. He preached Friday night, Saturday night uh -huh. to a couple thousand people. And he told them, get ready. He didn't tell them what, get ready. And he told me, wait till you see this. I'm thinking, what's he, what's he going to do to my church? I'm in, I'm in Texas. <laughs> Well, my wife, my wife's got the live streaming going on. Yeah. We're eating Mexican food. I'm looking at live streaming. And 450 to 500 people, two services, raised their hand. Wow. I want to accept Christ for real. Wow. For real. Even that's people, what it's even all people about. that have been coming to church. All these years, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I, I mean, for real, I want, I want Christ in my life. Yeah. And he said, if you're serious, and we, we set up a, he set up a swimming pool, him and my son, in the sanctuary, one of the big rubber swim pools. Yes. And said, get in the water right now. 300 of them. I mean, people in their 70s, kids wow. eight years old, women dressed nice. I mean, one guy had leathers on, dreadlocks, kicked the shoes off. Some of them didn't even take, they just, they got in the water. And I'm watching this eating guacamole and nachos like, wow, this is amazing. This is a move. This is amazing. Things are happening. Good things are happening, not just at Jubilee, but things are happening in the Bay Area that that's amazing. What has been your heart for change in the Bay Area? I mean, you've well, been, you're, you've traveled the world. You've seen, um, you know, people um, kind of um, change in the Bay Area. I well, mean, you've seen quite a quite a change. Here. I've seen, I've and you, we've seen uh, a bit of a mass exodus since 2008 with the recession. I mean, people lost their jobs, lost their houses. Some people lost their Marriages lost their minds. You're in the heart of that. Lost their help. It's I mean, amazing. it was it was. I've never seen anything like this. I, mm -hmm. you know, my grandparents told me about the the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. This was called the Great Recession. Mm -hmm. Lasted seven years. Officially over last December, they say. The economists say. I pray they're right. So we've seen we've seen churches shut down. I've seen I've seen uh, pastors discouraged leave the ministry. San Francisco, San Jose, mm -hmm. uh, churches merging, trying just trying to just trying to serve God and pay their bills, what have you. Church attendance down. But all of a sudden, the end of last year, and the beginning of this year, and, and notice over the last few years, the quality of preachers that have been moving to the valley. You got John Ortberg from Willow Creek coming into Menlo Park Press. You got, you got Chip, Chip Ingram. Ingram, Steve Clifford coming over the hill. 
a venture and a gateway. Mm -hmm. uh, all of a sudden, you got uh, Francis Herman Chan, too. Francis Chan, coming from uh, yeah. who's become a good friend, coming from Southern California yeah. to San Francisco with a little stop at Abundant Life to help them. Yes. Uh, Herman Hamilton from Boston, mm -hmm. uh, coming mm -hmm. in uh, to Abundant, and now he has his own church. Yeah. And, and you see uh, Ken Foreman taking over for his father, very successful. So you, you see something, it was, it was little, I'm not gonna say clandestine or covert, but it was kind of under the radar of how God was beginning to send Ed Savoso. A lot of people don't know that Ed Savoso, he's my neighbor, he lives in San Jose. Why does Ed live in San Jose? Because he believes the Bay Area is gonna be transformed. That's his whole, his whole life is transforming cities. Mm -hmm. Michael Pitts from Toledo, God told him, go out and help Dick once a month. And uh, his, his whole theme is cities will be one for Christ, yeah. starting with the Bay Area. When I was going to Bible school, it was either John G. Lake's granddaughter or somebody like that gave a prophetic word during one of our assemblies that the greatest end time revival, and she, she said, and she pointed, will start from the San Francisco Bay Area. Well, Carl and I looked at each other because out of 1,800 students, I think, I think, we were the only ones from the San Francisco Bay Area. Wow. And you could kind of hear people like, not chuckle, but like, yeah, right. Because we're supposed to fall into the ocean. God's supposed to, you know, whatever. Yes, that's, a, heard, that's the perception, I've right? I've heard it as well, that, yes. That Sodom and Gomorrah, San Francisco. But I don't think we're San Francisco is Sodom and Gomorrah. I think San Francisco is Ephesus. Mm. If you study Ephesus and San Francisco, it's amazing the similarities. A port city, avant-garde, vogue, yeah, yeah. Uh, spiritual but not Christian, or, or right. uh, and and money and people and people from all different walks of life, every neighbor, neighborhood speaking different languages. And Ephesus, here's Paul and twelve Baptists who got filled with the Spirit, and wow, look what happened to Ephesus. And we got the Book of Ephesus today and Acts to to. to tell us this wonderful yeah. story. I think that's what's going to happen, not just in San Francisco, but I'm talking about the whole Bay. Oh, we have to go to a break. Will you talk about that more when we sure. come back? And then sure. what we can do, what we can do to be prepared. Right. Okay. More with Pastor Dick, so stay with us. We're the least evangelized area in America, but we got the world coming to yeah. us. And we just have to present a gospel that's attractive and magnetic and mm -hmm. wants to pull them in to a root because everybody has a hole in their soul mm -hmm. that doesn't know God. Welcome back. So tell us about the transformation going on at the Bay right now. Well, after 35 years of being here, the most amazing thing I've seen is the heart of unity amongst churches that, you know, Baptist churches and Pentecostal churches. I mean, we are at the kind of opposite end of the theological spectrum, if, if you will. Uh, and, and some of our, quote, doctrines or beliefs has divided, not united. Well, something wonderful has happened over the last few years, and now it's gelling, is that those things are not important enough. Like a Presbyterian pastor friend of mine said, he goes, Dick, you know how I control you Jubilee people? When, when you visit my church, I go, how? He goes, we lower the ceiling fans. <laughs> and I said, well, Pastor, I said, do you know what we do with, when, when you, your Presbyterian church visits my church? We turn on the bun warmers to thaw you guys out. And we laugh and we have fun and we've developed a relationship and fellowship, play golf, eat together, uh, hang out together. And out of, out of just being able to see yeah. somebody's heart. Yeah. It's like, I don't care if you speak in tongues or don't speak in tongues. I, I, don't, I don't care if you lay hands or, or uh, I don't, you yeah. know, those, those things are not enough. Mm -hmm. And the thing is the key leaders, you know, the Chip Ingrams and the Steve Cliffords and the John Ortbergs and, and the Ken Foremans and David Kenneth Tracy's, the, the key mm -hmm. leaders, especially uh, Francis Chan, uh, people from way up, way up here, Marin County, yeah. over to Santa Walnut Rosa Creek, and on up. Yeah. Santa Cruz, Livermore. Monterey. Yep. Uh, we're talking about disciples of Christ. We're talking about some of the old conservative denominations like, you know what? Uh, what we've been doing is not working. We're the, we're the least evangelized area in America. Yeah. Uh, there, I mean, a, a minutia, a, a, just a, 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 a little portion of people yeah. 
have a relationship with Christ. So we gotta, we gotta rethink this thing. And, and so, what God say? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked or carnal or, or worldly ways, that I'll hear from heaven, I'll heal their land. And churches, I think churches are ready to be filled with people, but we've gotta make them feel welcome. We've gotta fast, we gotta pray. Yeah. We, we gotta preach faith, love, and joy, and, and be optimistic. Uh, about about because heaven is so wonderful. Yeah, the world may be trying to go to hell in a handbasket, but we're we're not of the we're in it, but we're yeah. not of the world. And it's not about the numbers. It's never been no. about the numbers. No. It's about somebody experienced Christ the way you did that completely changed your life. You know, it's right. about somebody experiencing it's a relationship. their relationship that is like nothing else. Yeah, you know, people go, well, how many people are you running? So, I ain't running anybody. Mm -mm. I'm walking by faith. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not beating people and making them run. It's like, oh, our attendance is this, our attendance is that. And we've got a lot of people that come to our church. We've had more and we've had less. Things go up and down with kind of with the, you know, but we're, right. we're, we're on an uptick right now and to God be the glory. And uh, some of my friends are having what we call revivals or awakenings. And there's so many young guys like Adam Smallcomb and, and these guys mm -hmm. that are uh, that are coming into the area with fresh kind of cool, you know, I call it cool church, and, and attracting young people. Dave Lomas in San Francisco, and of course Francis. And it's just, it's heartening to see that God has not given up on the Bay Area. Yeah, there are but, a lot of young people coming to the Bay Area for jobs. There's, there's you know, a lot of singles, a lot of, it's changed. Well, think about it too. Yeah. A lot of them are from Asia, mm -hmm. Indian people, Chinese people, and most of them bringing their traditional religion with them. So we don't all have to jump in an airplane and go yeah, to Asia, mm -hmm. to Africa, to Europe. They're all coming They're here. All here. Not that we shouldn't do that. But I, 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 kind of, I like to support national pastors and they yes. know what they're doing. They speak the language, eat the food, know, they know the culture. Mm -hmm. But we got the world coming to yeah. us and we just have to present a gospel that's attractive and magnetic and mm -hmm. wants to pull them in because everybody has a hole in their soul mm -hmm. that doesn't know God. You know, I was excited to hear when, you know, you, you were contacted and you became involved with TBC, and I know you're involved with Harvest Evangelism, um, but you've been at the heart of ministry in the Bay Area for so long, and I was, I was personally excited to see when you became a piece of that. And I know your heart is not to build Jubilee or not to build Venture or Reality SF or anything else. It's really all about Christ. Well, there's only one church. Jesus sees, you know, Jesus, yes, he sees you and I individually, but he wept over Jerusalem. He didn't, he didn't weep over a few synagogues. Yeah. I mean, he wept over the city. Jesus talks about cities a lot in the Bible. A couple of me cursed. You know, and it, it's like when Jesus looks out the Bay Area, he sees one church. Now we meet in different places. We have different names. We may dress different. We may preach different, but Jesus only has one church yeah. in the Bay Area. And he wants that church to unite under that oneness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and, the, and be united. Uh, and the Bible says that where, where there's unity, there's the anointing and refreshing, and there's the blessing. I think it's Psalms 133 or 134. And so that's, that's kind of, that's kind of what, what's happening. And, uh, you know, I, I, I said a prayer a few years ago. Lord, before I die, two things I want to see. Revival in the Bay Area, and the Giants win the World Series. <laughs> what happened? Yes, we Gi got what one happened? of them. No, we got three. Three no, times. Three World Series. Like, I am okay, such a we, Giants okay. fan. Yeah. Oh, since I was a little kid. Yeah. When they were in New York, I was a fan. Listen to the radio with Grandpa. So it's like, okay, so they won three World Series. What's up next, Lord? Got to be revival. Yeah. <laughs> and we went three. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I want you to say something to our sure. audience before we go, but I have two quick things for you. One is humility is what comes to me when I think of you, that you really are sold out for Christ and it is all about Him. And the other I want to ask you is what does Carla mean to you? Well, Carla, Carla when I met Carla, she started witnessing to me. Eventually, uh, led me to Christ, uh, got me to church, and encouraged me to go to Bible school. And when I told her, I said, I think, I think God wants us to start a church in San Jose. She goes, uh, yeah, he told me that six weeks ago. So I'm always playing catch up. You know, people who pray see things first. Yeah. They're prophetic people, but they don't always, they don't always say things they see. Uh, and so she's, uh, 
She's my uh, always been. I call her my greatest fan, and uh, uh, she's she's been part of our church. She's kind of behind the scenes. She's but she's, always not that supports, she's shy. She's always like, support. She's just that's not her gift is not in the pulpit. Her gift is one on one evangelism. Yeah. Every Sunday, almost every Sunday, somebody comes to Jubilee because she gave them a, she gave a track yeah. and invited them. All right. Yeah. We got about ninety seconds. Well, dear brother, dear sister, or whoever is watching wherever you are right now, there's a better version of you waiting. It's inside you. The best is yet to come, and it's inside you. You have to, you have to allow God into your life by accepting the supreme sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ. We're sinners saved by grace. It's, it's the grace of God. Listen, you haven't sinned enough to make God angry or turn his back on you. There's no such thing. That's a lie from the devil. The blood covers a multitude and even more of anything you and I, and trust me, I'll show you my list. You show me your list, and I probably will win when it comes to, Paul said he's the chief of sinners. I'm number two or three, whatever. <laughs> and yet here I am, a, a man of God, a preacher, by God's grace, because I accepted Christ into my life. It's the greatest thing I've ever done. And right now, you can do it by simply saying, Jesus, come into my life. Thank you for saving me from a life of sin. And from this day on, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Listen, heaven will not be the same without you. If I don't see you in heaven, I'm probably going to be depressed. So help this old preacher and accept Christ into your life. And then buckle up and watch the adventure that's waiting for you. Wow. For more information about Pastor Dick, Jubilee Christian Center, or the transformation going on in the Bay, visit jubilee.org or ktln.tv, and we will get you connected. And when you're in San Jose, drop by and say thank you to Pastor Dick for his dedication to this community. Remember that KTLN is a donor-supported ministry, and programs like this one are made possible through your support. Thanks for being with us. Join us again next week.